Okay, 1996 Pontiac Grand Prix SE with a 3100 engine. We're addressing a P0401 trouble code, which is an EGR flow code. Typical for this complaint, when you get the vehicle, the EGR valve has already been replaced. There's a brand new EGR valve on it. And our most common problem on this 3100 engine, also the 3400 engine, is a plugged up intake. And I want to show you how to walk through that. So we're going to do a couple things. We're going to uh, use the scan tool bi-directional. We're going to command the valve to open and close. We're going to listen for a rough idle. That would be one method. The second method I want to show is how to do it manually with a jumper wire safely, showing you how to read the wiring diagram, whether it's power or ground side switched, and then also to monitor the EGR valve position using a voltmeter. So we're going to do a flow test on this car, and uh, we're going to start with the bi-directional. Okay, a couple of different connections I wanted to show. I'm on the signal wire with a voltmeter, which is the center wire. It's a brown wire connected with my voltmeter. So I have my voltmeter set up at 0.725 of a volt. Pull up the scanner data. Looking at the scanner, it's not giving me EVP voltage on this one, but it is giving me EGR position percentage, and it's giving me the desired, what the computer wants it at. So. Uh, just so you know, this percentage over here is based off of that voltage and we're going to watch both of them and we're also going to watch our map sensor see how, how much of a map voltage change we get when we do the test. Alright, so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to use scanner bi-directional mode, which I'm in right now. I'm going to command the computer to open the EGR valve and what we're going to do is we're going to watch EVP signal voltage, we're going to watch EGR valve percentage, which is based off of this. And again, we're going to watch our map voltage, map inches of mercury, map sensor on this car is used for EGR flow monitoring, so we're going to watch that. What you want to see is you want this thing to get real rough. If our EGR passages are clear, this car should just about stall when I open this EGR valve 100%. Watch my EVP, watch my position, I'm going to scan, um, I'm going to tell the computer with the scanner, you hear it get rough, see my EVP voltage rising. It's not going to let me do this for a very long period of time. I'm at 100%. I'm at 3.3 volts. I'm showing 100% valve position, and I'm showing a map voltage of about 2.1 volts. That is not rough enough. This passage is plugged up on this car. The reason we did that, we addressed the solenoid, make sure the solenoid opens up all the way, which it is, and we are making sure our EVP reads correctly and that scanner just kicked us out and you saw my EVP voltage drop. So that's how you do it with the scan tool. I'm gonna to show you how to do it manually now. Plug that passage. Okay, what I, what I want to address now is how to do this manually. To do this manually, if you do this wrong, you're gonna fry the engine computer. That'd be a really bad thing. So what you need to do, this is my EGR valve right here in this picture and I need to address the solenoid. There's my two solenoid wires, and here's my potentiometer, the, pre, uh, the position sensor. So these two, I already have a mark. The yellow wire comes up this way, and it goes uh, over, over to the computer, and it says uh, EGR control on the computer. So I, I don't know the polarity of that. That's either gonna be power or ground side controlled. The other wire is gonna show me. So go back to the solenoid. I'm gonna follow the other wire. Sorry. So I'm gonna follow the other wire, which is this guy, which is pink, and it comes down to a splice, goes all, all over the place. We don't need to follow all of them. The, the main one that we're going to do, we follow the pink wire, and it comes up to a fuse. Therefore, this valve is ground side switched. So inside the computer right here is a ground side or low side driver. What we're gonna do is we're gonna give that wire a ground. We can safely do that and that's the gray wire, pin A, on the solenoid. We're gonna ground that wire and we're gonna force the valve to open. This is how you do it manually. Got pause it. All right, so in this case, what we're using, we're not using the scan tool bi-directional. We're gonna do it manually. We already identified that the gray wire right here on the solenoid is ground side switched. There's a safer way to do this. Let's use a test light connected to ground. Problem is, test light may not carry the current. This solenoid draws about 700 milliamps, almost a thousand milliamps. This test light only draws a hundred. This isn't going to do it. Watch my voltmeter. That's my position signal and it's not changing, right? That's not enough to open this valve. So you have to use a jumper wire 
I'm using a fuse jumper wire. This in no way, shape, or form protects the driver and the computer. All that's gonna do is protect you in case you jump the power wire so you don't blow something else out. You have to know what you're doing here. If you don't understand power ground side switching, do not do this kind of testing. So I'm giving this a ground, we already determined that. We're gonna ground this, it should get real rough. Position voltage at 4.3, a little bit higher than what the computer was commanding it at. Idle has gotten rough, but not rough enough. This motor should have stalled the second I hooked that up. My map voltage, average of my map, is around two volts. We're gonna check that when we're done. It's gonna be higher than that. So I'm gonna show you next uh, how to clean this passage, what it looks like, where to clean it at. Um, this is definitely confirmed plugged up intake passage. All right, so we have the throttle body removed, we have the EGR valve removed, and I wanna show you where this, these things plug up. Uh, there is a passage that runs between the EGR valve and the intake, and that passage that gets plugged up is right here. This is the um, exhaust side, sorry, this is the intake side, this is the exhaust side, and what happens is this passage right here, it gets plugged up as it enters the intake manifold. And there's a passage on the inside right behind the throttle body. I'm gonna show you that there's carbon deposits all built up around here. And what we're gonna do is use mechanic wire and poke it through, use some shop air over here while we're poking over here. We're gonna blow all that crap out of there. So let's see if I can show you the inside of this throttle body and where it plugs up. Okay, here's the inside of the throttle body, and you can see this big chunk of carbon. Uh, can you point that out for me, Bruce? Put your finger on that. That is your passage right there. That needs to be cleaned out. Um, there is actually a certain amount of flow that was coming through there uh, because of the rough idle that we have when we energize the EGR, uh, but that's what you need to do. You need to pull the throttle body off. You need to pull the EGR valve off, and that point right there, we're going we're gonna, to... Uh, Use again mechanics wire and some shop air. We're gonna blow that out. There is no amount of spray cleaner that is gonna get that out of there. You have to scrape it out. Good. All right, so this is the after. And what's important is that you understand when you clean out this passage, which is, I don't know if you can see the angle of that. That's good. You see the passage is cleaned out and uh, there's a smaller orifice inside but uh, it goes deeper in and it actually gets plugged up over into here and you have to get all this stuff out of here too. So we'll know if we got this clean enough, once we bolt the EGR back up, bolt the throttle body back up, we're gonna redo our flow test and I'm gonna show you the after result and that'll be our final confirmation that we're clean enough on this. I worked with this as much as I could, got as much out as possible. I think we're gonna be okay. All right, I figured uh, while we were here, I wanted to show you another aspect of what happens with these systems. And this has nothing to do with an EGR flow code, the PO401, but what I'm addressing right now would be the pintle position error trouble code that you get with these EGR valves. Now, sometimes the potentiometer goes bad and you just need to replace the valve. This is the new valve that was on the vehicle. Um, but, uh, most of the time, it's not the potentiometer. What it is is carbon deposits that cause the valve to stick. So this is the pintle area right here. When I push on this, you see it opens and closes nice and smooth. And I'm gonna push down on this and I let it go and it should close. Now I do this one. This is off of another car. I was sitting in my room, sitting on a shelf. I push down on that. You notice that the pintle has stuck on this valve right here. And so a lot of guys in the field are replacing them and you don't need to replace, you see that unstick? You don't need to replace it, I'm gonna show you how to clean it. So one of the things you do, that's how you check it, is you grab the valve and you, you open and close it with a screwdriver and, and if it sticks, then you know, you found your problem. Um, and it's now not sticking, but you get the idea, we saw it before. But what you do to clean this, there's two places you wanna clean. One would be the, the seat area. So you take your screwdriver, let's see if I can zoom in on this a little bit better, I can show that. And what we want to do is we want to clean the seat area of this valve. And that's going to be right in here. Where's my flashlight at? You shine this light on that for me, Bruce. Do it at an angle, like this way. There you go. What we want to do, you want to take your screwdriver and open this valve up right here. And you want to scrape the seat area. 
where the valve closes. Now leave the light alone. There you go. And we're going to scrape the sides of this. And what this carbon right here will do is it'll cause a it'll cause a too high error code. It, basically that's going to hold the pencil open off of its seat. And so you want to scrape all the crap off of there real good. Okay? So that'll let that valve close better. The second thing you want to do is you take this, it's a, it's a star or a Torx, and you take, um, I just use my pocket screwdriver and I push in on it, and then what I'm gonna do is just simply rotate the pintle, and this does not change any adjustment in any way, shape, or form. What that's doing is that's rotating the entire pintle assembly, the plunger and everything, and what, what that does, basically, is it's knocking off any carbon deposits that would be inside, and so you wanna go at different, length, different levels, push in on it, turn it, all the way down, turn it back and forth to the point where it's nice and free. And then when you open it and close it, that's what you should see, a nice even, and that should not stick. And that's good to go. You put that back in the vehicle and that will address the majority of your pintle position error trouble codes. and. Uh, whether it be too high, too low, and also rough idle with the EGR valve sticking open, that's what causes it to stick is those carbon deposits. And man, you can clean them probably eight times out of 10, pull it apart, clean it, put it back together, you're good to go, no reason to spend the money. So again, this is not associated, what I'm doing right here, with our 401 flow trouble code, but I figured while we had the valve off, I'll show you that one too. Okay, this is the uh, same car after we cleaned out the passages for the EGR. And we're gonna redo some of the tests. Uh, first test we're gonna do is our bi-directional test. And what we're gonna look for is uh, our map voltage compared to what it looked like before. We're gonna listen to the engine, see how rough it gets. Um, and so I'm gonna do the test. And I'm, I'm gonna scroll in, changing the percentage. Man, it's getting real rough. There's 100%. My map voltage went to, uh, is at 3.1 volts right now. We were at two volts before. It's real rough. That's what we want. Get back out of here. And the next test we're gonna do, so we had a, a one volt change on our map. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do the manual test now, and, and again, this is ground side switch. So I'm gonna take that same gray wire, jump it to ground, and what I want to show is the map voltage. When I do it, we're gonna pay attention to it. This car should stall for this test, uh, and so of course my map voltage is gonna go real high. Uh, but here we go. There we go. I stalled the car. That's what you want to hear. And obviously my map voltage buried itself whenever the car stalled, but really ultimately no need to really look at map voltage. If you can open an EGR valve and it, it stalls the car out, that passage is clean. Uh, this system, just to rehash, uh, we use scanner bi-directional controls, we identified it. We energized it ourselves, we identified it. Looking at EVP voltage, looking at map voltage, looking at whether or not the idle was getting rough, that was the key. How rough did the idle get? A lot of people think EGR flow gets a little bit rough, you're good. It's real important the engine gets real rough and just about stalls. Some cars won't stall, some will. As you see the result of this one, car stalled as soon as we energized that EGR. Seemed that the scanner bi-directional control maybe didn't open the valve as much as me uh, using the jumper wire. Of course, also, I'm going from zero to 100% open with a jumper wire and using the scanner, it's going in increments. And so the computer can kind of compensate for it along the way. Uh, but that's it, EGR flow, PO401 trouble code on any GM 3.1, 3.4 engine, same exact place, that's where they go bad. Don't change the valve for a flow code on this design, clean the passages.